Hello, and welcome to my e-course. And in this e-course, we are going to learn all about freight, des freight dispatching, the way that it works, what your role in is in dispatching, and why it's so important. And the title of this e-course is going to be called Mastering the Art of Freight Dispatching. And if you guys don't know by now, my name is Ashley. I know some of you have been following me for a while, and I know you guys are excited to jump right in to this course, so we are not going to drag it along. We are going to jump right in. And so from the beginning, because I know a lot of people was getting the ebook and they still want to extend it help outside the ebook, I have created this course. So not only can you follow along with me in the ebook, but you can also get more in-depth details on what these things mean and why they are so important to the logistics world. So we are going to take it step by step in this course so that you guys can get a deeper understanding of it. So in hopes in return that when you are finished with this course, you will be able to have the knowledge and understanding that you need to know how dispatchers operate, know how they move. You'll be able to utilize your problem solving skills. You'll know how to route your drivers. You'll know how to stand out as a dispatcher and you can expand and, um, you know, grow your business and just do all of the things that dispatchers do plus more. So we are going to go ahead. Um, if you have your ebook with you, then that's good because you do want to follow along with it. There is a couple pages in the beginning that you can take the time out to read on your own. This course will be uh, broke down into a couple videos just so you guys don't get bored of me talking and so that way you guys can get breaks in between time. So that is what the ideal is supposed to be when creating this course. So we're going to start off with the introduction page and I'm just going to read this word for word so you can follow along and then we'll go right into it. So welcome to the in transportation industry. By the end of this course, you will be able to dispatch your truck, have the confidence to speak to brokers, learn the terminology that is used in logistics world, and so much more. Make sure you have a notebook and pen, and I need your full undivided attention, so that way you don't miss out on anything that I say. But of course, you can rewind if need be, if you just need to write some things down because either I'm speaking too fast or you don't write as quick. Um, the transportation industry is one of the best kept secrets out here in the workplace. It is an over $1.2 trillion a year industry and growing. If you factor in air freight, rail freight, and inter interminal port and container freight, internationally and regular land freight, there is money in it for everyone. If you really think about it, goods are being moved from one place to the next day. Simply look at everything in your household and you'll discover that everything in here was moved and transported by someone. Um, and that's one thing that, that's something that I want to touch on because a lot of people are not aware of freight dispatchers. They're not aware that you can make money in this space and they don't know that drivers use people like us to move, um, help route their loads and prepare them for one load after other. So when people hear about freight, freight dispatching, they're like, oh, what is that? You know, how can I get into that space? And what, did it, what is it that I need to do to become a freight dispatcher? Which you guys are about to learn the secret in the sauce to all of it. So. The one thing that I want to say is dispatchers are a asset, not a liability. And when I say that, it's because we are capable of taking care of everything from the BOL to the POD. And we're going to go into detail of what those are. 
um, to call in brokers, shippers on the phone to give updates about loads. All the carrier has to do is focus on driving. It is up to the dispatcher to take care of all the back office work. Taking care of all the back office work can be added in as an additional service, or you can choose it to just help the carrier. But I highly suggest you charge for this service because it can be a lot, especially if you have multiple carriers. Carriers can take care of these things on their own, so they don't have to pay you for this, but paying you as a dispatcher to do it can save them time and money. So, like I said, some people don't know what a dispatcher is, and I'm going to break it down to you in definition form. So, what exactly is a dispatcher? A dispatcher is a person who is hired, contracted to assist drivers with booking their loads from point A to point B. Some dispatchers, it some some dispatchers will do additional things. Um, but they will charge for their services, whether that is um, paying, not paying, but whether that is helping the carriers get paid through the factoring companies, or if you are sending out invoices for them, or you're reading contracts for them, or you are checking off boxes for them, whatever it is service that you want to offer them and charge for it, some dispatchers do do that. So take that in consideration. Um, dispatchers are like agents uh, for the carriers. We pretty much, we are like their backhand. Um, we're like the second hand for them because all drivers want to do is drive. They don't want to have to worry about the reading and paperwork and all of that stuff. They don't want to worry about that. So the main thing they want to do is drive. So that is why they use you to do the other work. But don't get it twisted. Technically, drivers can dispatch for themselves, but they use us to save time. I'm not necessarily going to save money. Say save money because they don't save money, but they do save time. Um, and some of the services, like I was saying, that you can charge your carriers are speaking to brokers about getting the carrier set up for the first time, signing and confirming rate cons, running credit checks. Sorry, y'all. Um, running credit checks on brokers, submitting invoices to factoring companies on the carrier's behalf. Um, you can add, like, sometimes uh, the shipper or the broker, well, technically the shipper needs the broker to be added as a certificate holder. So your driver will get you to do that. That's another service that you can offer to them because what happens is you have to call the insurance company to get them to put list you as a certificate holder so that you can run that um, load for the broker, for the shipper. Um, you can submit the BOL once the load is completed. That's another service because technically drivers can do that. Um, you can update the broker shippers about the loads. Like you can continue to, when you're dealing with the brokers, you can continue to call them on the phone and say, hey, you know, so-and-so is stopped at in traffic. So they are running like five, 10 minutes late. Or you can let them know um, your driver is like five minutes out from unloading. Or, you know, just letting them know like, hey, the driver is unloaded. Everything is done. The load is finalized and complete. It's just things like that, that you can continue to update the shipper or the broker. And that's also another way for you to stand out as a dispatcher because that is the one important thing that um, shippers and brokers value the most is keeping track of where their freight is. Because one thing you have to understand is that's money that drivers are moving. So if anything happens to that freight, 
that is on, you know, for one, that does hold up a load for wherever that was supposed to go. But at the same time, that is money that your shippers and um, brokers are losing out on. So that's another way to stand out um, as a dispatcher, but that's a service that you can offer. And then also signing and filing um, carrier packets on behalf of your driver. Um, that's another service. So these are just some of the services that you can offer. It doesn't have to be, you know, all of them set in stone, but though that's the service that you can offer. So like the next couple pages are the common terms and um, definitions. Those we are not going to go over because that is something that's pretty much self-explanatory and you can like just read through the list and see because all the def definitions are there for them. And you're going to, out of all these definitions, you're probably going to use about five of them. You're not even going to use all of them. So that's something that you can, you know, take a look at um, on your, you know, on your time. I just don't want to hold, you know, this video longer than what we can make it by going over each and every definition. And I don't want to bore you guys with that um, whole list because it's a lot of terminology. But again, you're probably not going to use all of these, but it, it is good to know them. So when booking loads, you are going to need some documents because the uh, brokers um, will need certain pieces of information from you before they can start um, allowing your driver to run that load. And the things that you are going to need from your driver is you're going to need that dispatch agreement. You're going to need um, his or her load search profile. That is pretty much the profile that you have sent your driver um, getting their needs as far as like if they want to be over the road or if they want to stay home, um, what freight do they haul, how much can they haul, what type of truck do they have, like those type of things is what the low search pro profile is. Um, you're also going to need the MC authority, you're going to need the driver's W-9, um, and that is for tax purposes. You're also going to need the certificate of insurance. And you're going to need the NOA, which you're going to hear a lot, which is the notice of assignment. The certificate of insurance is pretty much proof that your driver has um, insurance and they have the legal amount of insurance that is required by um, the FMCSA for them to move freight. Um when you are getting your carrier and you're thinking about taking a carrier on, you do want to be careful when you are vetting, not vetting, but when you are booking these carriers and signing on with them. So you want to vet them as much as possible before you sign any contract with them. Because once you sign that contract, you are legally bound to stick by that contract until that load is up you know, or until your relationship is up in that time frame. So there's a few ways that you can vet your carrier and, you know, research them and look them up just to make sure that they are on the up and up because you don't want to come to a point where it's time to pay and they can't pay you or it's time for you to book that driver a load. And now the broker is telling you like, mm, nah, we can't work with them because either they're new they're damaged goods or, you know, they are out of service and you don't know that. So that is why it's very important for you to do your due diligence when it comes to um, taking on those carriers, because not all of them are going to tell you the issues that they face and they're not going to tell you, um, you know, the ins and outs of themselves. I mean, you'll have one here and there that will, but not all of them. So you just want to make sure that they are on an up and up because, you don't want to be stagnant trying to find loads and make money. And you can't because you're stuck with this driver who can't make you any. Um, so here, I'm going to give you a few ways of um, resources that you can use to vet your carriers. Uh, so one of them is CSA scores. Um, that is the compliance, safety, and accountability. That is on the FMCSA website. 
So you pretty much can go on that site. You can put in their MC um, or their DOT, or you can put in both. And that's going to tell you everything that you need to know about that carrier, whether it's been an accident, whether it's out of service, um, whether it has points against them, or, you know, if they haven't done like any inspections on their vehicle in a long time, that's because that's another thing that can hinder your drivers from going on the road is that um, if they haven't had, a, uh, if they don't have an updated inspection on the FMCSA website, um, nine times out of 10, the broker is not going to want to work with that carrier either because they um, are not updated in inspection. Um, also, the uh, satisfactory uh, versus conditional um, versus unsatisfactory ratings. Um, this is something pretty much like it's a score that the drivers are held on. And you want to make sure you're checking that score as well. So it'll tell you like their satisfactory rate, whether it is satisfactory or unsatisfactory. If it's unsatisfactory, you don't want to work with that um, carrier um, because that's not good as well. Um, and here it says carrier ratings determine how safe carriers are when they are out on the road. They consist of satisfactory, conditional, and unsatisfactory. What makes up the ratings? Um, what makes up the ratings are authority, operation, safety, insurance. In other, if the particular ratings is a color other than green, source, truck, search, future, trucker's path, then there is an issue in that particular subcategory of the rating for that carrier. For example, if a carrier has all greens in all of the ratings except one, say authority was yellow, then there must be an issue with the carrier's authority that may need to be addressed, such as it may be getting close to expiration, et cetera. Obviously, the closer, the closer to green in all of the rating categories, the better the carrier is and easier it may become for you to decide if he or she is the carrier for you. Another thing that you want to watch out for is the carriers that will use you um, to do all the legwork and then turn around and ghost you after you have told them and gave them information about the load. I have had that happen to me before where I gave the driver um, the information and letting him know like how much the load was paying, where it was picking up, dropping off who was the shipper, the broker, all the information that they needed to ghost me and, you know, undercut me and run that load themselves. And you don't want stuff like that because you just, again, time, well, time is money. So if you just spent all that time searching for that load and now your driver is undercutting you and ghosting you and they're not picking up the phone for you, um, for you guys to collaborate on that load, then you know, like, what can you do? Is is nothing that you can do. Um, but you want to be careful. And I know that's not really something that you can anticipate, but by you doing your due diligence and your vetting can eliminate that problem, you know, most of the time. So you just want to watch out for that. Also, another way um, to, to do it is to, uh, you can look them up through Google, and you can put in their MC and you can put in their DOT. And when you put up that, when you put in that information, a few options will pull up. You can click on a few of them just to see what you get, but you do want to click on them to see what comes up, but it will give you some information that you need um, for that driver. And then the last one is uh, Carrier 411. And Carrier 411 is just also another source that gives you information on your driver um, based on like their compliance and how they are with the regulations with the FMCSA, um, like the safety and stuff like that. And I also list the website in a link here for you guys to click on, excuse me, to go to that site. Now, 
onboarding. We kind of touched on that already, but we are going to elaborate a little bit more in reference to onboarding. So pretty much you're, you done already vetted your carrier. You know that they're on the up and up and everything is copacetic. So now it's time for you to send out that low search profile, that dispatcher agreement. And some people send out like the power of attorney and other little documents they send out as well for the carrier to look over and to sign back. Now, I know you're probably wondering like, well, you know, how can you do this? Because if they have to sign it and send it back, you know, how is that possible? So there's a few ways that you can do this for you to send it to them. They can sign it. You don't have to print it out or anything. They can look it over, sign it and send it back. Because remember, they want to do less work as possible. They don't want to have to read through all these documents. They don't have time or place to print this stuff out. So you want to um, make sure you're utilizing um, software that you can do this with. And, you know, technology is a beast nowadays. So where there's a will, there's a way. Um, so a few of these things are Adobe. You can use email. You can use DocuSign. You can use Faxin. And you can do um, follow-up calls. Now, Faxin, it was um, not like physical Faxin, but like e-Faxin. Now, some people do have e-Faxin where they can e electronically fax something over to the driver. So that is possible to do so. Um when you send out these documents, you do want to give them about two days before you follow up to see um, if they had a chance to look it over and things like that. You want to make sure that when you're sending these documents over, you're doing it at a convenient time for them, not for you, but for them. Because if drivers are in their resetting time or if they're driving over the road, they tend to get frustrated and or they're all worked up. Their mind is like somewhere else and they're really not focus in on what you're talking about. So you want to make sure you do it at a time that's convenient for them. So even if that is you picking up the phone and say, hey, I'm just checking to see about them documents. Is there a good time, you know, to give you a call for us to talk about it? They're either going to tell you we can talk about it now or they're going to tell you like, hey, call me back, you know, in about an hour or a couple hours, whatever. But they will let you know, like if, if they can talk about it now or later. And some of them won't even respond. Um, because they may see your percent and be like, oh, that's too much. I don't want to work with them or whatever case may be. And that's fine. So you just move on to, you know, the next person. Um, you don't have to, you know, press them out for their, um, you don't have to press them out for their service, um, you know, or working with them. Like there's a whole bunch of drivers out here. Don't get upset and discouraged if, they don't respond back to you or they don't want to work with you. Um, all of these are great ways to communicate with your driver, um, you know, efficiently and effectively. Um, like I said, when following up with the drivers, you do want to give them about two business days, give them time to look over the, the documents and you want to reach out to them when it's convenient for them, not for you. So this one right here uh, probably should have went before you um, onboarding your carriers because locating carriers, there is different ways that you can, you know, find your carriers, whether that is through the FMCSA website, whether that's you having business cards, handing them out, whether that is you um, having flyers and you see trucks and you posting them on trucks. I used to do that um, a lot. I used to have like a stack of flyers. And when I'm outside, I used to put them on like the truck drivers, um, trucks, or I would like put them inside of different stores if they allow me to, um, to, so drivers can see it. Cause you got to remember they have to eat. They got to use the bathroom. They do get out their trucks. You, you may even come across where, you are putting a flyer on a driver's truck and they're coming up to their truck. I've had that happen to me before and I was able actually, I was actually able to introduce myself by doing so and, you know, networking right then and there. Cause even if they are already working with somebody or they say they don't need a dispatcher in that moment, you never know what that may lead to down the line. So you do want to leave a good impression and a lasting impression when you meet them. Um, you know, when you're talking to them and you 
meet them. Also, you can um, place your flyers. Like I said, you can place them um, on a truck, uh, truck stops. Those are good too, but stay safe. So make sure you're going with someone when you do the truck stops because you don't want to run the risk of being out there by yourself and something happens or they take advantage of you, you don't want that to happen to you. Um, also, align yourself with Facebook groups. Um, make sure you make making posts um, on those Facebook groups, put, putting yourself out there, offering your services and stuff like that. Pay attention to the scammy people that are in your inbox and also pay attention to those scammy um, posts that you see in Facebook because a lot of them are not accurate and they're scamming out there as well. So you do want to be careful when you are reaching out to the carriers that you think are potential carriers and the whole time they just trying to scam you for some money or trying to double broke you or something like that. And that's a whole different story um, that we'll probably touch on later in this course. But just to, um, you know, be careful when you're in those Facebook groups. Um, also, if you see anyone with questions in a group, be sure to answer them so that they can see that you are well knowledgeable of what you're talking about and you're dispatching because that's also a way to reel somebody in when, um, you know, trying to find those potential carriers because you do got carriers on there just asking questions. And if they see that you know what you're talking about, they're going to be like, oh, hmm, she on or something. You know what I mean? So you just want to make sure you answer them questions. Like even if you think you feel like you're just wasting your time or you're wasting game, like still be sure to answer those questions. Another thing that you could do is make sure you're checking your messages, especially your spam messages, because I've had that happen where people um, reach out to me in my um, inbox and stuff, and it went to spam. So I never knew that they reached out to me to say anything. And, you know, that uh, ended up me missing out on the message. So, you know, time went by and I just didn't get a chance to reach back out to them. Um, you also can post, like if you're working with a carrier for some time, you also can post their loads, um, their trucks on the load board, um, because that's a big help too, because then, um, the brokers will reach out to you, um, if you have that specific truck and that'd be a good help because then you don't have to chase them. They're going to chase you, um, if you have what they're looking for. So that's another way to help and to, you know, get in your brokers as well. Um, the goal of an independent dispatcher is to try to sign carriers onto them with a dispatcher carrier agreement in order to search for the for and book freight for them. Cold calling carriers is one of the most effective ways of doing this. It involves calling a carrier and pitching your service to them in such a way that they could that they would want you to dispatch loads on their behalf. How um, The main thing that when you call your carrier and you're cold calling, the only thing you want to say to them is how much money do you need to move your truck? Because when you say that, that gets their attention. Like, hmm, what? Like, even if they're confused, it gets their attention because now all they hear is money. And it's either like they think you want to mess with their money or they think you got something to offer them. So the minute that you grab their attention with that hook, you want to sell yourself right from there. It's a good way to start a conversation along with asking them what their needs are, such as like their cents per mile, their drive radius, and states they would or would not want to run in. So you always want to make sure you are checking to see, um, you know, how far your driver is willing to go or where are they, where do they not want to go. So the next um, slides in here are uh, scripts to use when calling carriers. And I think we are going to, in you know, this first part of the course right here, um, because I did overload y'all with a lot. I want y'all to take some time to take that in and, you know, just start thinking about some things. If you want to move on to the next video, that's fine. If you want to just stick right here and take it all in and, you know, see if this is for you, see if it's not for you, or jot some things down, make some notes of certain things and, you know, stuff like that, then feel free to do so. But again, I don't want to run this video too long and bore you guys. So I'm going to end it right here and we'll pick up in the next video. And when we pick up on the next video, 
we are going to start looking into how to search the load boards. That will be our next um, thing that we are going to be talking about. But you can go over this script and study it while you are, you know, pausing this and taking a brain break going into the next video. All right. So I'll see y'all in the next video.